To get us in the party mood, we've got three great chefs in the studio today. First, the man of the helm of the ever-growing multi-Michelin-starred restaurant Empire, it's Jace Nathton. Next, another Empire builder, her restaurant chain Oaxaca, is taking over the country and introducing the nation to the joy of Mexican food, it's Thomasina Myers. And finally, a chef whose love of Mediterranean tapas is shared by the many diners at his collection of award-winning London eateries, it's Ben Tish. Welcome to the show, everybody. I think we've got a bit of a glimpse of, of London in here. Yeah, though, aren't we really? <laughs> uh, it's between everybody. So, Jason, you're throwing away. What are you going to make for us? Uh, so, we're going to do like a. It's a bit of a thing to get everybody over that, all that stodge over Christmas. We're going to do a nice, really light fish stew. Fish stew, combining so many different fish. We've got yeah. prawns, bit of sea bass in there Absolutely. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we're going to serve that with a little bit of. A little uh, bit of rui, very Mediterranean dish. Sounds Lovely. pretty good. Mm. And, Thomas, what are you going to follow that with? I'm really going to do a uh, wonderful slow cooked uh, joint of mutton, which is a lovely bit of lamb, uh, older than lamb. Um, we're going to be doing it with some Mexican chilies. It's a really lovely thing to cook for New Year's Eve. You can do everything in advance and it just comes out of the oven wafting. It's great at this time of year, though, isn't it? Mutton, you got hog it as well coming yeah. through as well. You've got much more depth of flavour to it as well. Yeah, lovely. Sounds pretty good. And, um, Ben, you're, you're following that with what? I am. So I'm going to be doing some uh, pig's cheeks, uh, braised pig's cheeks, but I'm going to add a kind of a North African influence to it, so there's going to be some cumin in there. Quite exotic, actually. Um, right. and I think that'd be really good for, like, a New Year's Day kind of lunch. Sounds Get you bang into the New Year. So these are slowly braised, then, are they, as well? Slowly braised and served with a cumin mash as well on the side. Sounds so always like a bit of mashed potato. So there you go, three tasty dishes to look forward to. We've got our brilliant lineup of foodie films from the BBC's archive too. There are treats from Mr Rick Stein, Heston Blumenthal, Nigella Lawson and Raymond Blanc. Now our special guest is usually wearing a loincloth and battling cyclops, headed, three-headed monsters, minotaurs, all manner of different mythological beasts. Uh, much like I'm dealing with this week, uh, to be honest. <laughs> uh, he's, of course, the star of the big-budget BBC drama series Atlantis. Please welcome Saturday Kidding. It's Jack Donnelly! <laughs> Great to have the show. Now, the list of creatures that you're battling is immense. Yeah. Uh, we're in the midst of uh, the second series as well. This is yes. quite a big thing for you, eh? 13 parts? It is, yeah. Episodes? 13 this is a... episodes. We're about yeah. halfway through now, and it's, I think it's about to turn and start driving towards the end to the big climax. But the first series, I mean, it was one of the biggest things watched on a Saturday night, wasn't it, really? I mean, yeah. It's huge. It, it did remarkably well. I think we were all really happy with the way it went. Um, it's interesting, though, because they've changed a lot this year. I mean, originally last year, I I think they were aiming for like a seven o'clock time slot, but yeah. then got pushed after Strictly. Um, whereas this year, no one they were going. Strictly again, you see. You can't compete. Yeah, Strictly <laughs> comes first. Yeah. Um, but then this year, they knew the producers. They were going on at 8:30, so I think they've tried to change the show to fit that time slot. So it has matured. Well, somewhat. I've been watching it as well. We're going to talk about that a little bit later, but it has has changed quite a lot. Yeah. Really. I didn't think yeah. you could make it better, but you certainly have. <laughs> uh, but you. now, of course, at the end of today's program, I'll either cook food heaven or food hell for Jack. It'll be something based on your favourite ingredient, food heaven, or your yep. nightmare ingredient, food hell. Now, we're going to get like, fate to decide which one you're going to be eating okay. at the end of the show. Cool. Not, It's not up to these guys over here. So, food heaven, what would it be? Uh, mackerel. It would okay. have to be, yeah. I mean, I, I love pretty much all fish. Um, but mackerel always seems to come top. Is that because you're into that omega three and you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's the omega three. It's the, the fish love oils. of the body yeah. and all that. So we've got something in common, really. We've got the same fitness trainer. Yeah, anyway, you've got you've it got exactly. <laughs> yeah. So but mackerel, okay. What about yep. the dreaded food hell? Uh, mushrooms, really. And right. it's not like I haven't tried. I have tried with mushrooms right. in cream sauces, on pizzas, in chopped up in stuff. It's just, oh. I can't do it. Okay. Well, there yeah. you go. It's either mackerel or mushrooms for food heaven. I'm going to serve the mackerel in a couple of different ways. First, I'm going to make a lovely tartare out of it uh, with some uh, herbs, capers and lemon juice. And next, I'm going to fill it the other part of the mackerel and flush it under a hot grill and serve the dish with some sauce shallot uh, rings, just a nice little spice in there and a few bits of coriander crust to go with it. Uh, or Jack could be facing food hell, those mushrooms. The mushrooms are added to a souffle batter, then baked and topped with cheese, then baked again, and it's served with a little mushroom sauce some roasted shallots and a few baby leeks to go with it, really. So, okay. glamming up the mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, glamming Double up. Double-baked souffle. Yeah. But you have to wait to the end of the show to find out which one Jack gets. Now, are you feeling hungry? Yes, massively. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's get cooking. And standing off today is this man. It's the brilliant Jason Atherton. And by the looks of this, we've got fish on the menu. Quite a lot of it. Merry Christmas, James. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in it, as usual. Right, we've got, got, what are we we've got a lot to do, so we better shake our booty. Yeah, so, so what do you want me like, to do? A nice little aioli or something? So we're doing like a little, it's a real basic fish stew. It looks, lot, it looks like we've got a lot of stuff here, but it's really simple. Okay. So, so once we cook all that pretty much together, yeah. we're going to make like a bisque with this stuff here. Yeah. You're going to make uh, basically garlic on toast. 
Yeah, I can do that, yeah. With a nice little aioli, see if you can crack on that wing. But I want to blend those into the butter, so it's got a little bit of colour to it, yeah? Okay, I can take out the centre of the garlic, uh -huh. so it's smelling too much, yep. but yeah. So okay. I'm going to quickly make the, um, and you can blanch those if that's okay. Yeah, I'll do that, no problem. Yeah, and I'm going to chop up, chop up this sort of like fish mirepoix. Yeah. And then just make a quick, quick bisque with it. So the bisque doesn't take long at all, really, you know? Yeah. So now, it's quite a quick this bisque. year, or yeah. this coming year, must be, mm -hmm. I mean, it never stops for you, really, because... It, it's no. not taking you long to have a, a restaurant empire, but where are we now on the on the amount? Uh, 16. So it's top Trump July, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Big Dubai, 16. Yeah. And the new one is Dubai, I believe. Is that Dubai, right? Dubai opens up in March. That's right. And then we open up um, New York in May. Then we open up the one next to Selfridges, which is like a wine shop tapas bar in um, in April. And then... Um, but I've got a big team, James. It's not just me, you know? I yeah. Don't, and then we um, and then we open up a Japanese our first Japanese restaurant in Clockenwell in our, um, in June. Where, where's that going to be? In Farringdon, in the old right. Turn Mills nightclub. Okay. I think, me, you, I think you... me and Ben spent a couple of nights in there when yeah, we were kids. Yeah, we did. Once, once, twice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right. So what are, we, what are we starting off then? What are you starting off with? This this is the soup bit. So fire away. Yeah. So so basically we've got all the mirepoix points. So we've got the fennel. The onion, well, the shallot, the carrot, star anise, um, um, saffron. Yeah. And we're just going to roast that off. We have the tomato paste, some fresh tomato. And we're just going to caramelise that down a little bit. Now, I've got two types of oil that you're using for this. Normally, you would use a bit of veg oil. You're putting a little bit of olive oil in here as well. Yeah. So you're using two different types. Now, I'm not a massive fan of uh, just using veg oil. I like a little bit of flavour tomato. It's the same old thing, and everyone says you should use this, should use that. It's, it's whatever works for you, right? Cooking's about experimenting, having fun, yeah. and, and whatever works, you know, and I just, yeah. I just like using olive oil for, for, okay. for making aioli, that's my yeah. preference. Cool. So what are you doing then? What have you right, got I'm in here? I'm going to prep the fish now. So what, what have you started off in there then? Oh. Tell us what you've got in this pan. So we've got... Where? In there? In here. Yeah. Fennel, onion, well, shallot, carrot, tomato, star anise, saffron, um, tomato paste. Yeah. And then we're just going to jam that down a little bit. And when I mean jam it down so it caramelises all, all that liquor, and then we put perno and white wine in there. Okay. And we're just going to bring that down. I mean, it's the classic, you know, it's the classic bisque, you know. But this is a little bit of a rapido version. Yeah. So we're just going to take those trimmings, we'll bob them in there. But fennel or fennel seeds are really the crucial part of this as well, that It's flavor. that aniseed flavour, what you really want, you know. Whether yeah. you get that from the perno, from the fennel, from, like you say, fennel seeds is a good one. So this is pretty straightforward right. stuff. So, on your travels, because you've got... I mean, where's your furthest place away? Is it Hong Kong? Have you got uh, Singapore, we've got, is it? We've got Hong Kong, Singapore, Shanghai. Uh, Sydney will be the, the furthest one away when we, when we open that, for sure. Right. That'll be our furthest one when we open that in next, next September. You've got a long way to catch up, you two, haven't you, really? So, we're... Um, <laughs> yeah, so, when we open that, that's a long, that's a long old journey, you know, for... Uh, yeah. We've got know. Cardiff. You got Cardiff? <laughs> 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 right, so what have we got here? Uh, using the shells for this? I am, yeah. So okay. the, shells are, the shells are going in there now. I'm just going to trim these up a little bit. So what gives you the inspiration to then push all this lot forward? Because you must get to a stage where well, I just you know, sometimes you've had enough or you might want to stop or... No, I mean, I, 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 just, I just love challenge, you know. I love new challenges, I love travelling, I love, you know, I love being inspired, I love, you know, meeting new people. I, I just get so inspired by doing what we do, you know. Yeah. How lucky are we to wake up every day and have a job where you can be creative, right? Right, so what, what's happening next, then? Because right. we've got so, about a minute, minute and a half left. So. OK, they're in there, so we're now going to add... We're just going to add a little bit of fish stock. Right? Just, yeah. just a tiny bit, not too much. OK, we've got the shells in there. We're going to add just a little bit of the uh, fish trimming. OK. I yeah, was right. going to stick all the, all the bones here, James, from the... Um, yeah. All the bones here, what we can use to make a fish stock. So these are all the bones from the, from the fish, right? So right. at home... Rather than throw them away, don't throw them away. Yeah. Just make a uh, fish stock with them. By This is what we've got here, so make a fish stock. Well, if you get enough, you can freeze them all as well, can't you? Exactly, That's... yeah. And then make your stocks. It's really good to have stocks at home, you know? I mean, and you can buy good fast, ones now, but... Mm. Fish stocks stay so fast. Yeah. yeah 20, so minutes, quick, you know? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Like so we're going to put the fish trimmings in there. They're in there now. We're going to get the fish <coughs> on to cook. Right, and garlic butter's on. So what are we it... cooking the fish in, then? Right. Do you want a little bit of oil in here? Yes, or? please, yeah. All right. Olive right. oil, I suppose. Yes, please, yeah. Look at that. There you go. A little bit more, James, please. Come on. Thank you. Absolute. We're not on a budget here, are we? Uh, not with all you three in here, no. That's <laughs> <laughs> I just get a few lemons to cook with at the end of it. That's all I get. <laughs> right, just, let it, just let that cool down a little bit. It's a bit hot now, isn't it? <laughs> it might burn it. OK. 
Okay. Right, so that's that there. Do you now, want me to blitz that? Yeah, can you blitz that? Yeah, that's going to go in here. Got one eye on my uh, croutons over there, which you're ready. Get these out. I can blitz that that's as well. Blitz that, thank you. So all this lot gets... Hey. You don't want to... Thrown you're, into your you're really good at this, James. You want a job? Uh, <laughs> I'm looking for someone for many... <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to stick me somewhere like Australia, are you? Somewhere like that. <laughs> you know. Yorkshireman lost in Australia. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. In go the fish. Like so. Right, we're going to be really quick. Right, this one's blitz. Do you want this blitzing and passing? Uh, yeah, just pass it and then just stick it straight into that pan there. Pass through a sieve. Cool. Right. OK. It's quite so thick, is that all right? Yeah, yeah just yeah, pass it off. Yeah, because the juice will be quite intense, you know? OK. So where in, where in the UK, then, is this, this... Or where in the world is this served? This will be like, you know, this is like a bit of a fancied-up version of what you would get, you know, in, in northern Spain, in southern France. There you go. And it would be like, you know, some parts of Italy. It's not quite as fancy in Italy. It's a little bit more simple. Yeah. So that's one my, my garlic butter as well to go with yeah, it. It's one of my favourite, uh, one of my favourite seafood dishes. Yeah? Favourite simple dishes. Seafood dishes. I was going to say, have you seen the amount of washing up you've got? No, I don't. <laughs> do <something. laughs> simple dishes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I love it. It's delicious. Eh? Yeah. Right. There's your aioli as well, oh. mm. which is the blanched garlic, the uh, egg yolks, a touch of vinegar, yep. saffron, and the two different types of oil. Cool. Got in there. So, right. I'm just going to put this into. I'm just going to reduce it a little bit. Go on, you okay? Yeah. Perfect. Turn that up a bit. Is that cool. Yeah. Looks good, that, doesn't it? It's all right, that, doesn't it? Just check it for seasoning, James. You're not bad at this, are you, really? I do all right. So. Right, so. Black pepper. Yep. Definitely some salt. A little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon juice on the fish, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Might need some, uh, yeah. God, you made a mess there, James. What's that? You made a mess there. Look, I haven't just made any mess just on a my little section. bit. <laughs> we've made a small mess. <laughs> right, right, so then we're just going to put a handful of cockles in the sauce. Open them up. And bingo, we're ready to go. Let's get the fish on. Perfect. They're just opening up now, which is looking good. Now, of course, all of today's recipes, including this one from Jason, are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, these are perfect. Just opening as you want them. They just cool. pop up nicely. They're ready. Yeah, cool. So right, the lemon to, in uh, it. Yeah. Just put them all. You want to put them all over that? All over. That oh yeah, there. yeah. There you go. <laughs> Make yourself useful, James. Yeah. <laughs> are the sauce on it as well? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's it. Perfect. Great. Lovely. Look at that sauce. The sauce is banging. With that? Yeah. Super, super happy. So, can you see it's not complicated? No, not at all. No, it's not complicated. So we'll Do you want a bit of herbage on it? Yeah, let's get a bit of, let's get a bit of dip on it. Yeah, that's great. So, just really simple. We're not, like, getting too stressed about it. Nice, simple. <laughs> so, give us the name of this dish, then. What is it? So this is like a corny fish stew based on the classic Marseille uh, uh, soup de poisson with uh, garlic on toast with aioli. That's what it is. Well, it's looking great. What does it taste like, though? That's the thing. Right. Pretty good, hopefully. Dive into this. <laughs> of Thank I'm you. sure you've got to try that with that as well. That's okay. the idea of it. It's the sauce you just wow. dunk in there as well. Right. You've got to get into the first. sauce. It's all about ah, the sauce. Okay. The key to this, like I said, if you've got enough fish trimmings, uh, trimmings from the prawns, that yeah. kind of stuff, but, you know, you can mix and match the fish. You don't mm -hmm. have to use the fish that's right there. Whatever fish you want, yeah, you can yeah. whatever. And if you, don't, if you don't like shellfish, just take shellfish out and just do pure fish. Yeah, know? exactly. I love the star anise in it. Mm. So it's great, lovely right? way it yeah. comes through. Mm. Really it's lovely. Great. And that mm. bit of fennel as well, which mm. is what, so traditional with that. Yeah. What fish is this? Sorry. So you've got mm. hake, mm -hmm. you've got a little bit of uh, halibut, mm. you've got sea bass, prawns and cockles. Mm. Cool. Oh, lovely. Cool. Not bad for a really that. <laughs> that's, all that's all I'm saying. <laughs> right, we need some wine to go Brilliant. with this. Yeah. And our dynamic duo, Peter Richards and Susie Barry, have been to London enjoying the sights and choosing the wine. So let's see what they've chosen to go with Jason's stunning stew. 
Come New Year's Eve, thousands of people will be thronging here on Westminster Bridge to welcome 2015. But for now, we need to find some wines to go with today's dishes. But hang on, where's Susie? Peter? I thought we were going shopping. For wine? Oh, come on then. Jason's fish stew is an absolute showstopper, perfect for sharing around a buzzy, noisy, fun table. We're definitely in white wine territory here, and we need something that not only complements the fish, but also has enough concentration to stand up to the intensity of some pretty punchy ingredients. Our first instinct with this recipe was to go for a nice lemony, herbal, pick pulled de pine, like this lovely Domaine Feline, because it's grown just a stone throw from the Mediterranean, and it's often paired with very similar styles of dish in southern France. But when we tried Jason's stew, it was a classic French wine, this deliciously elegant putty Chablis that proved to be the perfect match. This is special occasion food, so if you fancy pushing the boat out, go for Grand Cru Chablis. But Petit Chablis is a great value alternative that's still in that classic, invigorating, but rounded and really food-friendly style. It's definitely fresh and tangy, and that works beautifully with the tomato and the fish. And the cool crispness of this Petit Chablis is the perfect counterpoint to this warming stew. And that rich aioli needs a bit of texture and weight in a wine, and this one really delivers. There's a delicacy to this wine that won't overwhelm the more subtle flavours of the pan-fried fish, but at the same time, it's got enough weight and structure to stand up to the overall intensity of the dish. So Jason, thank you for this recipe that's ideal for sharing with friends, and here is a perfect bottle for any party table. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, those two certainly know their stuff. What do you reckon? It's just the classic marriage, you know. It's the perfect. It is the perfect wine for that type of fish, mm, and it's yeah, just bang lots on. of flavour in there. Fruity, mm. lovely. Yeah, yeah. lovely yeah. balance, lovely. And what do you reckon to the dish? Not bad. Not, not bad. that you get no, much. Right. Just <laughs> <straight down. laughs> I didn't eat before I came here. I knew this was how this yeah, was yeah, going to go exactly, down. So. Yeah. Yeah. This is fantastic. And as Jason said, it's, that's kind of perfect for that in between Christmas year. You know, when you want something a bit lighter and fresh. I think I'm in Marseille. I, I, yeah, I'm it's in gorgeous. Marseille. I'm drinking my glass of wine. Yeah. No, actually, here. I'm going to bring you out. You're in Clapham. Though. <laughs> <laughs> right, coming up, Tommy will be turning up the heat with a Mexican mutton dish. What are you going to do with it? Slow cut mutton, so kind of falling off the bone, and then just gently spiced with some ancho and chipotle chilies. Sounds pretty good to mm. me. Okay. Now let's jump across the Mediterranean and see what. Sicily, of course, is famous for so many great ingredients. One of the most popular over the world are its lemons. Uh, and I've got some, and I'm going to transform this into sort of a, a simple little lemon posset, really. Um, you don't get any easier than that, really. It's just lemons, cream, and sugar. Okay. Simple as that. But we're going to glam it up a bit, and we're going to serve it with strawberries, which are still in season. English strawberries, which right. is unbelievable. Um, still got some in my garden. How on earth they're still growing at this time of year? I don't know. But they're, they're English strawberries. Try one. Thank you. Uh, very you can much. tell that they're English because yeah. of the taste of them. They're getting smaller, of course. And then I'm going to do this with a parkin. Now, a parkin is a is almost like a sticky toffee pudding, but it's made with um, oats really more than anything else. So first thing I want to do is get on and, and get our base for our parkin. This is what gives it its unique sort of texture. We've got butter, we've got golden syrup, black treacle and sugar. And the combination of these, as you warm them up, makes this cake lovely and thick and sticky. And that's the key to this, really. Because when you make it, it lasts for a good couple of weeks, but it gets better probably after about two or three days. It gets a little okay. bit more stickier. And that's because of the sugar that you put in there as well. So, I mean, first of all, congratulations on the first series, Atlantis. Second series as well. Acting had to be for you, really, because your family were, were surrounded by it, didn't they, really? Tell yeah. That. Your um, mother was a choreographer? Or? My mum, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. is a dancer and a choreographer. My dad uh, was an actor. And then I have three younger brothers who have all sort of ended up doing similar things as well. One's an actor and a writer. The other one's in Cirque du Soleil. And then my youngest brother, Finn, is a model. So not the, the most ones academic family. <laughs> yeah, who would want to do that? And who's the more competitive out, out of the group, then? Is that... I mean, it's pretty equal. We're all fighting for my parents' love in some way or another. Um, but I, I, Harvey, the gymnast, is probably winning. I mean, he's based out in Vegas. He's in Cirque du Soleil. He's doing... But that said, my brother Sam has just written a musical that's been bought. So 
he, you know, he could be moving ahead now. So like the restaurant, though, you've got competition in the family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you written a musical? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's your family, yeah. So, I mean, tell us about Atlantis then, because okay. the first series was unbelievable, massive Thank hit. You. I think it's the biggest rating since Robin Hood on, on a Saturday it, night it as did, well. Yeah, open here and in America, um, BBC America, it's their biggest opening show. Um, so, okay. yeah, it's, it's done well. It must really have been happy. incredible for you, really, because, you know, taking a part like that, you know, relative, dare I say, unknown, yeah, big absolutely. risk for the producers as well. Mm. What was that like getting that phone call? Because it's huge Saturday night. Absolutely, yeah. I, I mean, I think I did five auditions for it. I knew some of the other guys that were auditioning, and they had CVs as long as your arm. I mean, yeah. you Googled them, they came up. So, I... So you Google them. I quick, did. Quick tip, Jack. Never ever Google yourself. Okay. All right, so yeah. lesson in life. Don't Google yourself. You might yeah. not like what people have to say. Yeah. No. <laughs> fair, enough, fair enough. Go on then. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe if I got this far, they might offer me something smaller in the series further down the line if yeah. I'd come this far. And then I guess they decided to take a risk on Relative Unknown and I'm eternally grateful to them. So, yeah. Because, you know, to make a series like that, you know, series two, there's big expectations mm -hmm. with it as well. To make it bigger, they have done, and make it better as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and like I said, the, I think the series has matured this year. It's certainly got darker in some ways. Um, and the action is up. I mean, there was sword fighting and horse riding last year, but nothing like this year. I mean, they've created entire battle sequences and wars. Uh, storming the city, which we shot in Morocco, so they've really pushed it as far as they can go. Right, I'm just gonna just gonna go through this. We've got the oats in there. I've got uh, a little bit of nutmeg, mm -hmm. ginger. That's you've got quite Love a ginger. lot of ginger, powdered ginger in here. Bit of salt, some uh, mixed all spice that goes in there as well. A uh, little bit of milk. That's all gonna get warmed up. All these mixtures sort of been warmed up. We're throwing the eggs. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a relatively simple mixture to make, to be honest. Okay. A bit more ginger as well. That's thrown in as well. Um, and then all we do is chuck the flour in like that. And then, once this is warmed up, you take the entire lot and throw that in. Like that. And then, you just simply mix it all together. Okay. So, using a whisk, we can then just grab this. And, and parking is one of these things that's traditionally, particularly in my neck of the woods, served at bonfire night, mm. really, more than anything else. And you generally, my family used to make this about two or three days beforehand, but it's this sort of sticky mixture that you get, the amount of sort of golden syrup and treacle in there yeah. that really makes the difference. So you just pop this into a tin and then bake it. So I said it couldn't get any better, Atlantis, but it certainly has, but you've stopped sort of... You know, you like to do all, all your own stunts as well, but you, yes. less rolling around, more sword fighting. It's Absolutely, got, the yeah. fighting sequences have got much bigger. Yes, they have. Uh, it was a conversation I had with a stunt coordinator before we started this year that they knew they wanted the action to go up a notch. So there's a lot less gymnastics and forward flips and far more sword fighting, but not just for me, I mean... A bit like this show, really. Absolutely. You've stopped doing that, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just, you know, Mark Addy, Robert Ems as well, the other guys in the show, Aisha Hart, who plays uh, Queen Ariadne. I mean, it's, for them as well, they're fighting virtually every single week that we were shooting this year. If not most days, there was some form of action going on. Um, and I think the show has benefited from it, but it does get to a point where you get a bit tired, because after seven months of it, you start to get slightly injured. Um, <laughs> yeah. Slightly injured, because you did... It. I'm just going to show you how to do this possibly. Yeah, We've got the, the sugar and the cream in there, yeah. and then you throw in the lemon, and this is one of the easiest recipes you'll do. It's sugar, cream, lemon, and you squeeze the lemons in, and you'll see, almost straight away, yeah. when I put all these lemons in, it just thickens up. And with time in the fridge, I mean, the guys will appreciate it as well. It's just such a simple little dish. Mm, love it. And right. If you're worried yeah. about doing desserts, for particularly for sort of uh, New Year's Eve, you know, and all that kind of stuff, you've got a lot of people around. Yeah. This, you can see it almost, look at that. It, it thickens up straight away. Yeah. And with time in the fridge, all you've got to do, really, is take this mixture, and you can see, look, it's getting thicker and thicker. That's just cream, sugar, and lemon. Nothing else, just lemon zest. I mean, I'd eat that, that like that. <laughs> If you want a straw, or <laughs> you can just have those as it is. And then you pop that in the fridge and it sets, really. Now, I mentioned these sort of stunts and stuff. Mm. Didn't you... Did, wasn't, was it this series or last series you got stabbed through the arm? Last you? series I got stabbed. This series, it, it wasn't quite as bad. Um, I ended up in A&E because of a sprained ankle. Um, and a week before finishing, I took a sword to the eye. So I have a tiny scar. Took just, a sword to the eye? Yeah, I took a sword to the eye um, a week before the end, which is tiny now, but at the time there was... A fair bit of blood, and that freaked out the producers because we thought we're never going to finish in time. But on the whole, I think I was pretty lucky. Nothing too serious this so year. So what's what's next for you? Because uh, you know, what, what do you strive for now? Because you've got you know big blocks blockbuster behind you. What, what 
It's interesting to know where to go next. Do you have a plan for next? Or? Well, you know what? Different things, really. Um, I'm working with a couple of friends at the moment on writing some things, uh, which I'd never thought I'd be into before. And they're really the creative ones, but trying to get that put on. Because you've done theatre as well. I mean, theatre, mm. you know, like I said, acting's in your blood, really, your, your parents and everywhere else. But, you know, theatre, you still, you still yearn for that? I do. I, I miss theatre. I miss the time you get in rehearsal. I miss only working two hours of the day in the evening. Um, yeah, that said, I mean, most of what I did before was fringe work, so I've never been in the West End or anything like that. But I, I would like to go back to theatre and performing. Right, well, I was going to show you what this, this posset looks like, really. OK. You just end up with this thick mixture, and normally what you do is you just pop this onto a... into a glass, really, but... Yeah. What I'm going to do is fancy it. Because I'm in the presence of half of the London restaurants, and then I feel the need to glam it all up. So we've got a little bit of lemon sorbet that you can buy as well. Um, because we've just had a few, you know, monkey eggs left over for Christmas, we've then just... No, they're actually fresh. <laughs> but these have just been made into a little meringue. Okay. Just a little bit of texture as well, but... Just going to pop those in there as well. Just nice little bits of shards of meringue. And all you do is you break the, the, uh, the parking up. Right. And they're just nice and simple, really. And then some of this lemon balm. I love this stuff. I don't know whether the guys use much of this in the restaurants. They probably do over there. Very mm. Mexican. Li very? Mexican. Is it very Mexican, is it? Yeah. I was going to say it was invented in Yorkshire, really. That's what I was going to say. But, <laughs> but a few bits of that over there. A bit of lemon balm. And they, they have it, really. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. But if you try really? it with the, the parking and everything else and try it with the, the posse. Yeah. I'm going to get various different... But uh, while they're not looking, I'll just put another dollop of this okay. lemon posset on it. But it is so simple to make. Yeah. It's great. Um, just the cream, lemons, sugar, <coughs> and proper parking. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, it's speeches. really good. Thank you very much. 15 mm. quid. Thank right. you. <laughs> right, we'll be cooking for Jack at the end of the show. You could be facing food heaven. Mackerel, which I'm mm -hmm. going to serve in two different ways. First, I'm going to tartar some of it with some lemon juice, capers and herbs. Then simply grill the other part and season it. And finish it off with some sour shallot rings, a few croutons and some coriander crust. Or Jack could be facing food hell, those mushrooms. The mushrooms are added to a souffle batter, then baked, allowed to cool, topped with cheese and cream, and then baked again. It's a double-baked souffle. And the souffle is served with a mushroom sauce with roasted shallots, baby leeks and a little bit of chervil to go with it. Happy with that? Yeah, this sound, I mean, that sounds nice. This is great. There you go. We'll fill your <laughs> boots. You. Uh, right, it's time for more magical... So there you go, there's no excuse for making a packet trifle again. Still to come this morning on Saturday Kitchen, Nigella Lawson is celebrating in her kitchen. She's throwing a party and serving savoury panettone squares. Will Jack be facing food heaven, mackerel tartar with sow shallots or food hell double-baked mushroom souffle? Of course, it's not up to our chefs today. Instead, we're letting fate decide. And I'm going to explain exactly how at the end of today's show. Right, it's time to turn up the heat a little and welcome the world of Mexican food to the Saturday Kitchen studio with a recipe from Tomasina Myers. Great show on the show, Tomasina. Or Tommy, you want to be called, do you? Yeah, I haven't called me Tommy. Tommy, that'll do for <laughs> me. Uh, we've got a fantastic piece of uh, British lamb there. So what are we going to do with it? Uh, so this is actually mutton, which is mutton, olden lamb, so, yep. which has got this great depth of flavour. And it's a, it's a really popular cut in Mexico, actually. They love these kind of goatee, muttony great kind of meat and I'm going to be uh, seasoning it now with some spices I've got some cinnamon stick and cumin seed right. I've got some cloves and star anise in there a bit of rosemary because we love a bit of you know it is it is lamb you know kind of lamb yeah. sheep uh, so rosemary is going to go really well rosemary they don't really use in Mexico but it goes so well the flavor of the meat so where does the love of Mexican <laughs> food come from for you then what so I travelled there uh, when I was 18 and yeah. I didn't think there was any kind of Mexican food. I didn't really think about it at all. And then I just couldn't believe the food. It's so delicious, so very, very regional. Yeah. Kind of changes from where, wherever you go. The food kind of just changes in flavour, the ingredients change. So for this little, uh, for the base of this lamb, we've got some carrots and some onions. You want some garlic in there as well? Yeah, let's get it. Just smash those cloves up, get okay. those flavour coming out. Okay. And, um, and then before we get this in, I've got all these spices in here. Now, the Mexicans love to use spices. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is we're going to rub this mutton with all these wonderful warming spices. Yeah. Now, of course, you can get some of the fat off the skin. I normally, like, take a bit of the skin off. You don't want too much fat going in here. But really just rub this rosemary, the bay leaf, and all these wonderful spices. Into, and then you can sit that in the fridge, that, that leg, for about, yeah. you know, a couple of hours overnight and get all the flavour going in. 
Yeah. So we're going to shove that all in there. Ooh. There we are. And now, of course, a bit of chilli. So I've got two chilies here. Right. I've got the ancho. Now, people think chilies are just hot. These anchos are lovely because they are sweet. The flavours are rounded. They are pretty amazing. I'm going to just get rid of all those seeds down there. Okay. Um, and we're just going to tear it up. Now, you can toast this in a dry frying pan beforehand. Kind of wakens up the flavour, but like you toast cumin seeds. Yeah. Or you can just shove it straight in. So I've got the ancho, and that's got the sweetness and the real depth of flavour and body. Yeah. And then this is chipotle in adobo. Chipotle, chipotle is a dry... You, you could be making in this up, I ain't got a clue what you <laughs> Chipotle, I understand. What's, what was that other bit you said? Uh, in adobo, it's like the sauce. So you can use a dry chipotle, but this has got some more flavour going in it. And yeah. um, it's just going to add a lot of flavour. Now, I've got red wine because we're, well, you know, we're going into New Year's Eve. I, I like a bit of red wine. It's slightly Europeanised, this. Right. If you wanted to be a bit more kind of bona fide Mexican, you might use beer, like a dark beer. And that would be delicious in it as well. So yeah. I'm going to just cover this up and pop it in the oven. So meanwhile, you're doing my squash. Meanwhile, I'm like. kicking squash around on the floor over here. But there we are. This and all goes in, go. the, uh, in the steamer. We're going to steam gonna that, it. put this yep. in the oven. There we are. Now, what about mutton, guys? Do you use much in the restaurants? No, Just... we, I, I don't really use it. I mean, I, hoggart, definitely. If, if I'm using hoggart, we'll put it on the menu. But mutton, I don't know, not, not really. Not so much? Not so much, no. It's, it's, hard, quite... it's hard to sell it, you know? That's the thing. I think when people try it, they'll, they'll like it, but it's, yeah. Difficult yeah. To, yeah, it's difficult to stick it on the menu exactly, and yeah. sell it. But... It's very chef -y, chef -y But it's getting more popular now, I think. I mean, there's a real mm. um, renaissance which is going on. The thing to do, though, is to make sure there's halal mutton, which can be a bit tougher because it's not hung properly. So I try and get non-halal because it means it's actually been hung and that really tenderises the meat. Right, so what, what do you want, you want me to do this puree? So we've got... The, uh, the butternut squash has gone in here. So squash, again, another Mexican ingredient. It's going to give a lot of colour. The sweetness of it is going to go really well with our sauce. Good quality olive oil. Good quality olive oil. Just bung in, like, three or four tablespoons. Just puree it up. It's going to be delicious flavour with it. I've got some Swiss chard. There is still Swiss chard in my garden coming out. It's such a great vegetable. I'm just going to shred it up. There we are. It is great. It comes in all different colours as well. Oh, That's the great lovely. thing about purples, reds. Yeah, yeah reds. I do like the white version as well, though. I think the flavour is a bit more gentle. Get some stalks going. Right, so how long some... would you put that lamb in there for? It... So I reckon something like that. You want to slow cook three or four hours, 150 degrees with your uncle. And you so want I'll to take, take on. this one out, then? That'd be great. So... Get that pan on, some olive oil. So, yeah. And we can put some butter in here too. I keep calling it lamb, to be honest. So, but yeah. Anyway, mutton. You, you can use lamb. The thing is, you can use lamb if you, you can't get hold of mutton. But that mutton's was, just that got that better depth of flavour. So right. put that on there, and then yeah. we can. This is just going to fall apart, isn't it? Really? It's going to well, fall apart. Meanwhile, we can put these oh, okay. in here. Yeah. Yum, yum. So all the gobbins, the chilies, the vegetables, all go into this sauce. There we are. And all we're going to do is we're going to whiz it up. Yeah, you want so, me to do that? So yeah, you can whiz it up. I'll put that over there. Yeah, perfect. Salt and pepper. I'll do this and get this one on. Sorry yeah. about the noise. But... And you can check it for seasoning. Just watch the top. And I need to add a bit of water in there. So this is all the veg, the chilli, everything's just got... gets blended in here. There we are. So is this a dish from, on your restaurant as well at the moment? This we're developing for Oaxaca, and um, we've got... We're turning Covent Garden into a slightly higher-end restaurant. We've got some Mexican chefs coming over next year. Next year's the year of um, UK and Mexico, so there's loads of stuff going on. We're taking over the Roundhouse for a great Day of the Dead celebration. So, yeah, it's going to be busy. It's good. Fab. Right. So, there we are. Lots of stuff going on in Mexico. So, we've got the char sweating down there. So, how's that tasting? It's good, eh? It's good, eh? I'm going to check this gravy. Get a spoon. No, it's pretty good to Now, make. red currant jelly. You can use red currant jelly, which is great with lamb and mutton for a bit of sweetness. Is it always... Cos I always think that part of the world is that there is a bit of sweetness in there as well. It's that sort of Moroccan-esque sort of... There's a touch of sweetness going to either honey or anything like that. Would well, that be right you know, I... There is natural sweetness in the ancho. I mean, I'm English. I love a bit of red corn jelly with my lamb. This is mutton. We're going to... You know, you, I think we're in England. I'm just adapting it for my palate. If you're going fully Mexican, as I say, you could use beer instead, dark beer, and um, it would be delicious. Really, really good. So we're just getting this sweated down. This is a really simple puree, isn't it, really? Just this and olive oil, so it's... Yeah, have you put some salt and pepper in there? I've put salt and pepper in it, nice. yeah. Nice. How's it tasting? It tastes right. pretty good, yeah. Pretty Get good. Let's heat right up. 
And I'm going to add a tiny bit more water in there. I do like butternut squash, though. People should use it more. It's great. I think it's great in risottos and stuff like that. It's fantastic. That's what I love yeah, about Mexico. So, you know, in yeah. terms of biodiversity, so many ingredients came from Mexico to begin with. And um, that's what's so great about it. The squash, pumpkin seeds, the chilies, the avocados. Really great. So there we are. And you can see this meat is just falling apart. And that's what we like. And what you'll find is that spices have formed a lovely crust on the outside. And you see how I whizzed up the bay and the rosemary, which I like, kind of enveloped it all. Because that got, got so that Do you want going. a bit of salt pepper in here as well? Uh, I've, I've seasoned that. OK. I'll you, could use some, um, you could use some butter in there too for extra flavour. Always good. That, that, that sauce will warm you up, though, won't it? Yeah, it's, you know, that's why you, the sweetness helps that, doesn't it? Does Quite it? spicy. <laughs> Yeah, it gets you afterwards, doesn't it? Yeah, it's great. But, you know, we've got the squash there, and uh, that's going to help. And how's this child doing? There you go. Well, that's cooking. Now, of course, all of today's recipes, including this one from Tommy, are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, and then we'll just pour some this. But it thickens up because you blended it with all the veg in there as well. Yeah, that's yeah, the... yeah. Great. Yeah. So it's a really lovely thick. And it goes all around and a little bit of greens. We like a bit of greens. Nice and charred. Quelitas, they call it in Mexico, for colour. Yeah. And there you are. Everything can be made ahead. Yeah. And it's uh, just a lovely so dish. Give us the name of this dish. Eve. This, you could call it berilla, but it's basically a slow braised mutton with ancho and chipotle chilies. It smells amazing. I know it smells good, but what does it taste like? That sauce has got a bit of a kick in, guys, I tell you. Dive into that. Tell us what it oh, looks yeah. very good. Uh, Jason's got one eye of that, that piece of mutton over there on the board, just having it as it is, really, but tell us what you think. But, is that normal, you do the sauce like that, with puree and all the veg? Is that something traditional? That they That's do not at all traditional, right. but, you know, I kind of think when in Rome, who's the Romans? Absolutely. When in... Uh, Sassy kitchen. It's not too hot, James. Isn't it? No. That's delicious. Ooh. Really good. Must be me. It's not yeah, I don't think it's... All right, all right, OK. <laughs> it is. Damn hot. Anyway, right, we need some white to go with this. Uh, let's go back to London, see what Peter and Susie have chosen to go with Tommy's marvellous, not-so-hot Mexican mutton. We love a challenge, and finding just the right wine for Tommy's spicy, slow-cooked mutton was a delicious one. That heady combination of sweetness, heat, spice and savoury meat needs a very particular kind of wine. It has to be red for the mutton, but nothing too big, oaky or dry. I have to say, we worked our way through quite a lot of bottles to find the perfect one for this particular recipe. This spicy floral dow worked well. But the wine that hits the nail on the head is the sensational value, extra special, Old Vine Garnacha from Carignana in Spain. Some of the best value on the high street right now is coming out of Spain's lesser known wine regions like Carignana. Now this wine is made from the juicy and succulent Garnacha grape variety and it's bright and perfumed which ties in with the vibrant aromas of the dish. Now first and foremost it's got juicy acidity and fine tannin which cuts straight through the richness of that mutton. There's also a lovely generous dark fruit character here typical of Garnacha which just offsets the heat of the chilli and picks up on the red currant jelly. And then those lovely scents of cinnamon, cumin, clove and star anise are accentuated by the gentle spiciness of this wine. Tommy, we were absolutely blown away not only by your mouth-watering mutton but also by the amazing value of this gorgeous Spanish red. Salud! They certainly know what they're talking about, but, you know, I mean, it's difficult to find bargains still out there, but this has got to be one of them, I have to say. Five quid for this. And that's what I love about these Spanish grapes. They're just, they're great. They're original, you know, people haven't heard of them so much, but they're just delicious. Yeah. Not, you're not drinking, but you're making up for it from this plate. Look, <laughs> just look at this. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just yeah. me. <laughs> well, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was only most of me. Yeah. I would ask you what you thought of it, but that's blatantly obvious. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I'm done. What, what do you reckon? 
Yeah. Absolutely delicious, and it's spiciness, it's nice spiciness in there, kind of works well with the, uh, the extra spiciness of that sauce. But yeah, it's, it's delicious. Well, I'd like really, to try really a bit good. more, but you know, this is, yeah. this is proof luck, of the James. pudding, you see. That is absolutely you know, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably, I did see you, that is a lot, yeah, yeah that is mainly yeah. you. I'm not even sorry. I'm I mean, not, <laughs> not even. Yeah, no, exactly. All uh, right, so Ben, your cooking shoddy, what are you going to make? I'm going to be making uh, North African inspired pig's cheeks with cumin and crispy garlic mashed potato. Well, while you get ready, let's drop into the old always glamorous world of a certain Miss Nigella Lawson. She's throwing a party for her friends and he's travelled to Venice to pick up some inspiration. <laughs> Great stuff and Happy New Year, Nigella, if you're watching. Uh, right, it's time for our next recipe and it's from this man, Ben Tish. Uh, welcome to James. the show, Ben. Thank you, James. Uh, pig's cheeks on the menu. Pig's cheeks, yeah, love pig's cheeks. Use them all the time at the restaurants. What and, are we going to do with home. them? Um, North African inspired dish. Right. So um, we're going to braise them, kind of a classical braise, um, but we've got some, uh, some sherry in there, some cumin, some smoked paprika, and some raisins. Interesting uh, way to cook yeah. these. And then well. the dish is going to be finished with a piccada, which is a natural kind of thickener. So we've right. got nuts, some bread, some parsley, a little bit of the cooking liquor of the pork cheeks. Some orange zest, that gets whisked in at and the end. And this chocolate in here is not because we're hungry, because that's going to go in Well, there. if you're lucky, James, apparently there's uh, a square each for us at the end. Right, right, apparently. But, so yeah, chocolate in there. And then we're going to be doing some mashed potato flavoured with some garlic and some cumin seeds. OK. So, first thing, I need to get the, uh, yeah. the, the, the cheeks on. Yeah. Um, heavy bottom casserole. It's quite important, this first process, is uh, getting the bra making sure the cheeks get brown properly. That's where all okay. the flavour is. OK. Um, so, I've got these beautiful gloss roll spot pig's cheeks. And these have been very kindly trimmed of sinew. Yeah. Uh, and that's really important, otherwise they just kind of bow and they just get a bit chewy if that's not done. So, you, you know, Butcher will probably be able to do that for you. But it's, nice... not, it's not from the... I learnt this the other day when I was butchering it down. It's not from the whole pig cheek, it's from the lower part, the chap yes. part of it. That's, the, that's yes. the bit. Exactly, yeah. And these are known as spots, aren't they? Yeah. When you buy them, it's... Uh... So, nice hot pan, olive oil in there. So while I'm peeling spuds when we've got them all done already. Here, so... Okay. So you want this passing through a, a yeah? Rice, so then? pass it through a ricer, please, James. Okay. And um, and then yeah, we've got plenty of butter there to to, to whip into it. Okay. And um, we're going to fry some of this garlic, finely sliced the garlic. Okay. Cumin seeds. Fry that in some butter. Sounds little good. A little bit of little bit of colour on the garlic, so it gets a little bit crispy. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it. So say so nice caramelisation on these cheeks. Yeah. Really important. Right, there's our spuds. There we go. Good stuff. And you like to say you want fried fried garlic with cumin. That's what you want in there. Fried garlic cumin, please. Okay. Yeah. We we'll do that. So get a little mirepoix ready. So getting a bit of colour on this first of all. Then. Yeah, a bit of colour on that. Okay. A little mirepoix here. Now you're saying that it's thickened with this sort of sauce at the end, but I'm intrigued with this. I've never never even heard of this before. Avocado. Well, it's quite a classic. Um, again, North African, but they use it in in, in Spain quite a lot as well. Right. Um, it's just whisked in at the end. You've got obviously the bread, um, the bread and the nuts blitzed up will will naturally thicken the sauce. Right. It saves you putting kind of flour in there. So mirepoix in there, and then yeah. get that nice and browned as well. And as you go and just scrape the bottom of the pan, all that sediment on there is is flavour. Okay. That's, um, that's going to help the sauce. Paprika and. Uh, Cubing going in there. Right, so what have you got? What are you putting in here? Because we don't want to miss that. I've got, okay. I've got almonds, orange zest. Almonds, orange zest, thyme. some thyme, some parsley. Yeah, that's going in here. Yeah. So I've got raisins in there and got my cheeks going back in there. Okay. Right, what else have you got in there then? So I'm going to take some bread. You just want the inside of this bread? Yeah, then? just the inside, James, please. Yeah. Okay. Cute. And we've got some sherry going in there as well. Kind of medium body cherry. Pardon? Medium body cherry. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. Oliroso. Yeah, nice. Cool. Yeah. So just bring the, that to the boil. So I've got my stock in there, the, the, the sherry's reduced down, everything's kind of in there now, and this is going to go in the oven, about 150, uh, for about an hour and a half, until it's, you know, until the cheeks are... Uh, your oven fire. Thanks, Shane. So that's going to go in there. So quite a Please. lot of oven, then. Yes. Straight in there. Yeah. While he's swapping that round. Uh, yeah. Now, of course, all of today's recipes, including this one from Ben, are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Right, we've got that over. So, see yeah, that? That looks good. Yeah. Nice and rich. Just have a little taste of that. And Do then, I yeah, take some of this sauce now and... Yeah, a little, little ladle, just a little ladle of that in there, James, just to kind of help it. Right. See that? That's Shut delicious. That as well. It's really kind of exotic, you know, there's exotic flavours coming through from the cube. Yeah. It smells good. Yeah. 
So turn that up a bit. Cool. So turn what you end up with this this thick stuff here? Exactly that. Yeah. So a little spoon of that in there. You get the feeling I haven't got a clue what I'm doing. I'm venturing into the unknown here. A little you spoon of that in there. Just that in there. Yeah. Exactly that in there. Okay. Cool. Then we just turn that in. That's it. All right. Okay. Sure. Then bring that to boil, and that will kind of help thicken it. Should we want a bit more? Is yeah, that a little, little, little bit more. A little bit more. That bit? Yeah, perfect. Um, how are we getting that mash? That mash is done. Garlic's in it. Okay, cool. There. Nicely seasoned. Yeah, I think so. I haven't checked it yet. But okay, I'll... It. Okay, so... There we go. Nice bowl for those. Stir that in, just bring it to the boil. Yeah. And then no, there's just got... butter in here. There's no cream, nothing? No cream just... in there, no. No, just, just, okay. just butter and then the... Um, so the garlic okay. and the cumin. That's good. Okay, and you want a spoonful of this on the plate then, do you? Yeah, okay. we're ready to roll, definitely, yeah. So, mashed potato on the side. Mashed potato on the, served on the side. Okay. And you can see how that picard has thickened the, um, thickened the sauce there. And that orange zest really makes a, really makes a de delicious scent from that. Where's the chocolate going into this? Yeah, I missed that bit. <laughs> Sorry. You can grate it on top. Yeah, <laughs> could do. What was it yeah. meant to go on there? It was meant to just go in, grated in the sauce. Good chocolate, though, Ben. Yeah, nice chocolate, yeah. Mm. Good, that was... Very nice. It was, actually. It's okay, better cool. better off than there, to be honest. But we... Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this... Um, ...picada on top. Just to kind of melt into that. There we go. So give us the name of this dish, then, Ben. Okay, so we've got North African-inspired uh, pork cheeks, braised pork cheeks with picada and a beautiful cumin and garlic mash on the side. Sounds good to me. It's a flourish. A flourish of bit of chocolate <laughs> yeah. at the end. Exactly where it needed Not to be. Not on the recipe like that on the internet, but, you know, it's... It's, it's, it's there, it's there. It's there. there Lovely. Uh, right, have a seat over here. You get to dive in again. You finish the last dish. I'm, I'll yeah, hold this back. This'll just... This'll you finish. Guys, yeah. You'll you be guys asleep start. if you finish this. This, this yeah. is pretty hearty. Yeah. It's mm. pretty full on this one as well, yeah. isn't it, really? But like you said, if you can't get pig cheeks, mm. you can make a similar sort of dish with beef or, you know, it's, it's just a yeah, it's just definitely. great sort of flavour. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, beef would definitely work. Mm. That's yummy. Nice yeah. way to finish it off mm. as well. Oh, yeah. Get the orange, that orange. orange coming through yeah, from yeah, the yeah, garlic. Yeah, I think it's, great, uh, great, great. It's yeah. a great dish, I'm just going to be left Thanks. with a portion of mashed potato. That's great. Right in your street, James. Story of my life, isn't it, that? <laughs> uh, right, we need some wine to go with this. Let's see what our wine experts, Peter and Susie, have picked on their London shopping trip. Uh, let's see if it matches Ben's brilliant pork. Wow, Ben's pig cheeks really are quite something. These are big, heartwarming flavours. So we need a wine to match. It's definitely a red wine dish. And given the Moorish or Spanish feel of this recipe, our first instinct was to look to Spain and something like this rich and creamy Rioja Reserva by Cune. But the spice and dark chocolate don't sit easily with too much oak or the kind of solid, robust styles you often find from Spain. What does work brilliantly is the balance of acidity and bittersweet dark fruit character you can find in Italian reds, and most particularly, this utterly delightful Settevigne. Settevigne is made from seven different grape varieties grown throughout Italy, and it has a wonderfully modern feel, as well as really classic Italian flavors. Now, this is a dish packed full of rich, Bold, garlicky flavours. And this wine has enough concentration and depth to cope with that brilliantly well. It's also got a lovely, juicy, cherried acidity which will refresh the palate and complement those melt-in-the-mouth pig's cheeks and wonderful potatoes. Its bittersweet character picks up on the dark chocolate and the orange zest, but it's soft and generous enough to offset the heat of the paprika and to tie in with those raisins. And then finally, this wine's from the 2010 vintage, so it's had time to mature and soften in the bottle, developing tobacco hints that complement the cumin, the thyme and that Oloroso sherry. So, Ben, thank you for these magnificent Moorish-style pig's cheeks, and here's a delicious red to enjoy with them. Cheers. Cheers.
It's pretty serious, that stuff, isn't it, really? It's got a fair kick with it. It's got a fair kick and it's pretty... Yeah, it's, it's heavy stuff, but it's delicious. I think it works really well with it. Combination chairs. of seven different great varieties, yeah. really? Yeah. You couldn't really tell in that, because it's, you know, a great wow. combination. It's, it's really spicy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. A little bit like a Shiraz, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. great blend. Nice, win really nice great winter blend. wine, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Really good. See, that's, you know, that's probably the final... You're slowing down a bit, Jack. I'm only doing... Just to be polite, as soon as the camera's <laughs> off, I'm back in. Oh, you're yeah. back in. Right, well, Jack be getting his idea of food heaven, that mackerel, done in two different ways, or his food hell twice-baked mushroom souffle. Now, we're going to let fate decide today. You can find out exactly how after we enjoy... Happy New Year, Mr Raymond Blanc. Right, it's time to find out whether Jack will be facing food heaven or food hell. Now, food heaven, we talked about it earlier. Yep. Mackerel cooked in two different ways. One of it soused in a nice little tartare, the other one grilled, uh, served with a few little pickled veg to go with it. Mm. Alternatively, the dreaded food hell would be mushrooms. Yeah. Double-baked souffle, mushrooms, chagra, leeks, lovely little dish as well, mm. double-baked cheese souffle. Um, now, I said at the beginning of the show, because we're not live, we're going to let fate decide today whether uh, Jack gets food heaven or food hell. So, a vast expense to us and our props department. You know, you think you've got props department on Atlantis. <laughs> this is this is taking the props department all year to do this. Okay. These are sugar champagne bottles. OK. All right, so don't try this at home. They're sugar champagne bottles inside one of them. Also, sadly, to our, for our crew, there's no champagne in it. There is the word heaven mm -hmm. and the word hell in each of these. Now, to make you feel at home, uh, to break the champagne bottles, also from our props department, we've got a rubber hammer. <laughs> do you okay. feel like you're getting into character now? I do, it's just like being back on set. It's, well, apart uh, from yeah. the jar and pasta <laughs> and the Christmas tree behind you, but yeah. uh, pick a champagne bottle pick first, champagne and then I'm just... break it over the table and okay. tell us what you're going to be having. Oh, I love this show. <laughs> OK. Oh. That's... This is a oh, first. Right. OK, brace yourselves. <laughs> oh. Check that out. That worked. That worked. Yeah. 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 Might have taken all year, but it worked. And there, there, and it's heaven. There Yay. is your word, heaven. You, you've right. got to break the other one just to prove a point now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was proper character, wasn't it? I'm starting really to get into, into it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Smash it, smash it. Sorry, chill out. <laughs> you know, I was running for cover then. And there you have the word hell. Lose this out of the way. That's what you're going to get. I'm glad it's this, to be honest, because I wanted to do this. So you can lose that. You don't okay. need this for the mackerel. Uh, we just need a little... So lose this out of the way, yeah. guys. That's the uh, mushrooms out of the way. So what we're going to do is make a little pickle to go with this. So the right. pickle is in the form of sugar, rice wine vinegar, or white wine vinegar, and a bit of salt. So it's actually really simple to do the pickle first off. So I want you to pickle the uh, bits of celery. So I want you to thinly slice it. Uh, it's long as well. So if you cut it into pieces like that, thinly slice it, and yeah. then just fan it out, if you know what I mean. So we're going to open that. Pickled uh, onion rings and pickled radishes as well to go with it. Yeah. And if you can do the tartare as well for me, please, Jason. Yeah. So I'm going to take you a little bit of fillet and then uh, you I'm can... Just fillet it for you. I'll fillet it if you want. Well and, and then dice shallot uh, and then rings for the pickle okay. for that okay. one. All right. So dice shallots on this one. Yeah, a few leaves we'll use for the little garnish. So mackerel here, all we're mm -hmm. going to do is just fillet the mackerel, set the knife underneath like that, Let's turn it round along the backbone. Yeah. And it just slides off like that. Length, okay? length, long length. So we'll do the so same thing with the other so, side. Yeah. So we'll just take knife in, turn it round, and then carefully just slide the knife along its backbone. Yeah. Like that, and it comes out. Like that. All right. So this is one part we're going to do as a tartar. The other part we will just simply grill. So okay. I'm going to take the bones out for uh, Jason Isn't here. Twice? and take the skin off, probably, because I don't know whether I want that. How do you want your radishes? Thinly slice? Uh, if you can just thinly slice those, that would be great. Yeah. And sorry, James, would you... This celery, what do you celery, want Celery, if you thinly slice it first in a long piece... Yeah. That's it. If you take this and yeah. then just... Ever so thinly slice it that way, and then just carefully cut it. I'll this way? Yeah, really, really thin. Yeah. Thin pieces, that's what we want, really, for this one. So that's your pickle. So you've got the sugar, salt, and all basically dissolved in there. That's as simple as that. And then what I'm going to do with this is just fillet this, like that. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, skin it, and then this is going to be used for Jason, really, for his... Uh, this is lovely fresh mackerel. This is for this the is, paste. This is for... Yeah, you're going to get as a tartare, really, so it's, we're going to put in okay. a bit of lemon, that kind of stuff in there as well. I'm going to give you that. Thank you. That's all your fish there. And then for this one, we're going to take the bones out, so we've got no, the bones removed there. We're just going to make a little V-cut in there to remove these bones, one either side. I've never seen this actually done. My brother can do this, but I've never seen it. Your brother it. can do it? Yeah. Your brothers can do a lot, by the sounds of it. Very talented family, yeah. Cirque du Soleil and all that. Yeah. So pretty talented family, aren't they, really? Um, and then what we can do is just cut this 
into a piece, so we'll just take a couple of pieces like that. Okay. And we've got a big, where's that big tray? Can I have that? Yeah. That tray there. I need that big monster tray there. Yeah. I'm going to take this and then just grill it just simply. So a little bit of uh, rapeseed oil, mm -hmm. a bit of oilseed right there. And then that's just going to get cooked just gently under the grill. Now, for people just tuning in, because there's got to be a lot of people with a few heavy hangovers at this time of the year as well. <laughs> you know, of course, Atlantis, your second series as well. Yep. Going better. I didn't realise they could make it any better, which they have done as well. Thank you. Um, and you're the, you're the main star of it as well. What can you tell us about this season? Because it's 13 parts, we're yeah. about halfway through. Yeah, we're about halfway through now. Yeah. Um, we're taking a break, so the series is breaking now and coming back in the new year. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's about to take a turn. I think this is when it definitely gets more serious. Uh, the storylines start building towards the end. And I, don't, I think I can say that not everyone makes it to the end of the series. Really? Yeah. Most Ooh. people don't, in fact. Most um, people don't? Yeah, they start getting heavy on the with the cutting, so... Right. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'd, yeah, I won't see you next year. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so, and it moves towards the end. But I think the storylines that they've got coming up, I mean, already people have seen cats like Icarus and Medea being introduced, and they really come to the forefront now. So it's interesting to see where they take it. Now, it depends on how old you are. depends on... Because when I, when I uh, was reading about you as well, I was looking, looking at pictures you were doing, doing the show as well. Yeah. And, you kind of look like that guy from Clash of the Titans. Has that been said to you before? Uh, old one or new one? The, oh, the old one, do you remember yeah. The old, <laughs> yes. Do you remember the old Clash of the Titans? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You're yeah. not that old. Yeah. I, know. I remember. Yeah. But, <laughs> that yeah. has been said to me. That's probably the only reason I got Atlantis, because I'm the only one with hair that it does, that You do always kind of remind me yeah. of that guy. I Thank can't, you. I can't remember what oh, his I'd name say was. I'd that as a compliment. But, but, you know. I do love those curls. Thank you very much. <laughs> I get asked every week if I'm Lee Mead, so... <laughs> Lee Mead? <laughs> yeah. That's, I would have thought being on TV would have been cooler, but it's not. Everyone's like, you're Lee Mead. So, Lee Mead, right. Yeah. Okay. Right, we've got a pickle there. With the tartar, you're happening there. Yeah. We've got a... Do you want a spoon to put that in? Yeah, Now, there's your pickle for the radishes and bits and pieces you can put. Yeah, celery in there as well. Celery in there as well. That's your nice little pickle. OK, I've got some onions. Do you want this for tartare on top of your croutons? Yeah, well, you can put a little bit... Yeah, that's it. Some of the tartare on the croutons. So, there's your mackerel, really. You can brush it with a bit of mustard if you want, but... I need a bit of salt. A bit of salt. There you go. So there you go. So you want to quenelle your... Do a couple couple of croutons. Yep. In fact, do three. Three, three yeah. Three, three. Oh. That's enough there. We've Can got a nice thing. little bit of... This is a little bit of... Uh, what have you got in Soused here? veg. So there's your okay. uh, touch of uh, uh, radishes. Of you've got your... Uh, uh, some onions yeah. and you've got your celery in, as well in there. So cool. And I thought, seeing as the guy that's got the most amount of restaurants amongst all of us lot, he can be the one that plates it all up, really, to make it look really fancy, because he's uh -huh. got more experience than anybody. You've got actually 17. Oh, yeah, Tommy has 17, yeah. Yeah. 17? Beats him by one. Have you? Yeah. Is that, what, is that one that's just opened while you've been on air? Yeah, next time. I was like, quick team, get on it, get yeah, on exactly. it, get on it. Yeah. Open the doors <laughs> a week <laughs> early. So, just for, I've, some food, I've got two, but that's enough for me. That's enough for me. Right. Do you want to cool. do your thing, Chef? All right, cool. You've got a bit of cresses here, you've got the nice little bit. Okay. There you go. Right. Where's the pressure's on? Pressure's on. Great. Right. There you go, Chef. Yeah, bad boy. Great. Lovely. Mm. Look nice at bit that. of just simply when you got mackerel this fresh, you don't need to do anything really with yeah. it. Yeah. You got your sour little veg to go with it. You got this Jace Nothing show if you're just tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his sous chef team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bit of an expensive yeah. kitchen brigade, I think. <laughs> <laughs> By the looks of it, I don't know whether they'll make money off from his latest restaurant. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bit of that bad boy on that. I think. James. Happy with that? So give us the name of this dish then. So we have here mackerel tartare on toast. Yeah. Roasted mackerel with a little soused baby vegetable salad. That's what it is. Amazing. Right. You guys get some nice and forks and okay. dive in. I'm going to get yes. the wine yeah, to go with this. Forks. Now, because they've been pretty busy, to be honest, uh, Peter and Susie, because they've shown a, a Tehran Sauvignon Blanc 2013 from nice. Marks and Spencer's, yeah, but they've good. also chosen, good. Yeah. because right. it's New Year, a nice bit of fizz and Udino. Uh, Max and Spencer champagne as well from the same place, uh, sixteen pound sixty-seven. So dive in. Yeah. Which one do you want? Do you want champagne? Well, that's rude not to, isn't it? Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not a big yeah, exactly. fizzy boy. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So in there. use the hammer. Then. Exactly. <laughs> use the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> and you got to dive into that. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Lovely. Tommy, Thank dive you. into that. He's on the wine already. Oh yeah. But what do you reckon? 
Which are you unbelievable. Well, that's nice mm. little tartare, I think, really. Yeah, and really nice. I just think with the cooked mackerel, you've got two different types. Slice bit of oh, sauce, yeah. veg to go with it. Yeah. I approve really of that. Really strong flavours. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a great dish, James. Yeah. Definitely yeah. heaven. Well, well, best of luck, yeah. guys, for 2015. Mm. However many restaurants you're going to do. Next time we're going to be back. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be in three figures. Oh, I know it is. Uh, <laughs> that's off, say, on Saturday Kitchen. Thanks to Jason Aston, Thomasina Myers, Ben Tish, and the brilliant Jack Donnelly. Cheers to Peter Richards and Susie Barry for the great wine choices today. <laughs> and remember, all of our recipes are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Saturday Kitchen. Now, we'll be back next year. That is next year. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day and Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for all your support over the years. Happy New Year. Ching, ching. <laughs>